don't get over here. All right, so we're here. Last couple weeks we've been working back attacks and back escapes, back all sorts of fun stuff. This week we're going to start um, going into open guard. Once we're through with open guard, then we're going to do a little bit of wrestling. We got some other fun positions to work in. So we're here. I get my gi grips, and I'm here. Good stuff for happening, right? But if I sit in the closed guard for too long, I'm not going to be able to do much. So i got to be able to open, but open in a way where I still have control. Because if I just flop my legs down, I'm just kind of laying here. Yeah, it's going to start to work and start working a pass goal as I civilize me. So when I'm here, I'm going to set one of a couple different grips. So you can go cuff grip, pistol grip, you can go back and triceps, or you can go wrists. Those are kind of, it's all varying on what you're trying to do and what you're comfortable with. For me, I'm going to either go pistol grips or the back of the triceps. I don't have big enough hands to just wrist grip people. It just doesn't work out with me. I'm not sized hands. And I don't, I'm not big on cuff grips anymore. So I'm going to go either pistols or back of, if it's no gi, I'm going to go back of triceps. So I'm here, I get my pistol grips, I got my clothes grip. Pull my open, drive both my knees in, both his hands to my hips. I open my legs. Pull his arms in, attach the wrist to the hips. This is the open guard. Nice part about this open guard is it's very seamless to transition between different attacks, sweeps, submissions, all sorts of fun stuff. So that's why I like this guard. I go to it a lot, especially in the gi, because it's very easy to attack. So when I'm here, I'm moving on a play. Whenever you're in this guard, if you're flat on your back, square in front of your opponent, just go back to close guard. You're fucking up. You need to be moving, you need to be off balancing at all times. So when I'm here, I don't care what grips you have. I'm extending James, I'm pulling him in, I'm turning, shrimping a little bit. It's almost like, man, if we had a drill to move like this and to get fluid with our motion. It'd be amazing, wouldn't it? It'd be awesome if we had a drill like that. If only. Man, it's almost like the warm up drills. Have a meeting, James! Almost. <laughs> So I'm here, right? I'm moving around, I'm getting him off balance. Because if I just sit here, James doesn't suck in jiu-jitsu, he's gonna start doing shit. So I gotta be moving and off balancing him, so that way he can't get comfortable and start attacking on his own. Now, as soon as we see an opening, all we're gonna do is, I'm gonna extend James out just that little bit, but I'm gonna bring my top knee all the way up as high as I can. As soon as I do that, I'm gonna pull the opposite arm across to my hip. That's going to allow me to shoot my hips up and pull him in. So the motion, I push, push, not ending, push past, pull, pull. Hands are pulling, my feet are pushing. I drive my hips up, close my triangle in. It's almost like we just warmed up a triangle. Amazing, isn't it, Carson? Amazing concept. Now, one of the big mistakes I see very often with this, and you'll and I saw it Tuesday as well, was a lot of people will just shoot this year and pull. When I'm here, I'm bringing my hips off the mat to find his neck. If I'm here and I just pull James in, there's a good bit of space right here. Nice little bit of real estate for him to be able to work with. When I'm here and I pop my hips up and pull him in, makes that a lot tighter, a lot quicker. That's why I want that here. Now, once we get here, order of operations as always. Arm across, I comb James's hair behind his ear and I grab my shin bone. I do not grab my foot. If you grab your foot and I see you doing that, just realize you're getting a good old fashioned slap from me. Grab the shin right behind his neck. That allows you to lock that elbow in, and now James can't get out of this easy. Eventually, he can wiggle and wobble his way out, but not easily. Where if I grab my foot, you might as well just let him go. I'm giving it back to him, it's fine. I'm here. I put my foot on the hip. Another thing that'll get you slapped. If I catch you with your foot on the floor, you're going to end up stepped over and nothing good's going to happen. Foot to the hip. Other hand, you can either scoop the arm, scoop the leg, grab some pants, do whatever you need. Help yourself cut that angle off. Once you're here, close the leg over the triangle here, arch the foot up, hammer the heel down. Alright? 
So we're here on this couple details that a lot of people mess up on the triangle. My shin bone should be in line with his, the front of his shoulders, to where my calf is on the back of his neck. That way when I flex my foot up, that flexes my calf. I'm going to hammer this foot down and away. With all that, that makes this, surf, this little triangle very tight. So I'm here, I'm in the open guard, I'm moving. I get to position, pull, shoot my hips up, close my triangle. Arm across, about my ankle. This is across his shoulders, not across his back. Here, close. Other questions on this? Yep, so we're here. Let's say you're a no geek because you're a savage person. You don't believe in light. I get here. I'm moving. I'm doing good stuff, right? Here. Everything else, same. Doesn't matter, geek, no geek. The tricep grips are a little bit harder. If you are an MMA savage, realize grabbing right behind the gloves is also a nice option. All right. Uno, dos, tres. So I'm here. Boom. I get to my, my grips. I don't care which ones you have. I open. One of the times a couple of you that I'll make it to the group. 90% of the setup of this move is off balancing James and making sure that he's not comfortable. Because if I just sit here and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just like that. That's not going to do shit. James is going to be super comfortable here. He's going to start to move and he's going to start to move here. All right? So when I get here, I'm off balancing James. I'm moving, I'm pulling, I'm using my feet, his bones, my knees, his hands. I'm making him uncomfortable. Okay? Now, as I get going, I get that motion in, right? I get him here, I'm going to open to whatever my dominant hand is. So that my top hand, so my top hand is my dominant hand. Right, right. Once I get here, I'm going to do a couple things. One, I'm going to drag the opposite arm across. As I do this, I'm going to drop my other leg to the mat. I'm going to pull this hand in, and I'm going to look to kick James, not sideways, but at the angle of this 45. What that's going to allow me to do is keep my grips, bring myself on top, and secure the mat. This is a simple scissors. Here, I get my grips. Move it around. Off balancing James. If James has a good base here, and I'm just like, hey, scissor sweep. I promise you it won't work unless they really suck. Which, Julian's fine, you can hit that stuff on him, but everyone else in the room, you gotta really get after it and get a move. So when I'm here, I'm moving, I open to the proper side. And I'm showing this as steps, but it's all happening as one. Here. I'm here. Kick, kick, pull. That allows you to sit up. Come up to the mat. Keep his hands if you need them. If not, like I said, settle back into mount. Take the attack from there. It's the same simple scissors we can get from guard, just from a new attack. Now, for those of you who are new key savages, you're like, hey, how does this work from here? Hey. I open to the right side. Pull, pull. This one I like to go high mount and double arm on. For another day. Same concept, works all, all directions. The biggest part of your open guard is once you've committed to going to open guard, you have to be committed to motion. If you want to be lazy and play slow, stay in close guard. I'm not upset about that. Play close, work from there. You want to be aggressive, you want to attack, you want to be exciting. For matches, super match, I mean, we have opportunities for super matches and all these stuff. If you want to get those opportunities to be exciting, commit to the open guard, commit to opening up and getting some attacks. All right. Questions on this? You 
can go over the top. For me, most of the time, if I'm going to do anything as far as coming here, you know, the only time I'm really going to look to go like really locked in, because I'm looking for monkey paws here, I'll go up to the armpit if I'm really happy. Like if I'm here and I'm really slip and slide, I'm like, oh. but, um, like if I'm real slip and slide, I'll come monkey paws into the armpit. It's not going to be as secure. But, or as effective for the arm control, but it'll give me that good lever if I need to use it to sweep, so I can slide my hands up again. Yeah, MMA wise, I'm gripping just above their glove. Like, Jason had gloves on them right here. Because then your hand locks into the top of that glove. Now, you're not grabbing the glove, your hand slips in, it slips in, but you're, you're using that top of the glove to lock your hand into place. Even my children's hands can do that. So, other questions? There's the stabilizing leg. Where is that? It's sitting on this side. It's not low over there. So, just make sure I'm hearing you right. When I sit my hips out, this leg scoops at right at his knee. Oh, it is. Yeah, it's right here at the knee. So when I'm here, I'm not trying to kick his thigh trying to scoop his knee out, kind of like you're trying to tip over a table, or like a bridge. Because once you're here, I kick this base out, take this base out, all I'm trying to do is put this shoulder right about here. This is the goal. Once that's there, boom, then I You're just kicking that base out from underneath. Other questions? Good question, you guys. Thank you for the type of thing. One, two, three. All right, so I'm here, Mr. Hackett. I get my grips, I get my open, I get here, right? And I'm moving around, I'm doing a lot of cool shit. Well, let's say for whatever reason, I want to do the sweep known as the oval plot. You'll hear rumors that that's actually a submission, I just scream. You can find that. But I'm moving around, and I'm going to get the same thing, my hip up on the side I want to attack. So I like going right side, so this is here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kick this leg through, use this hip to push me around, and I'm gonna arc my foot right back to where my head is. So the goal here is to 180 spin. So when I'm here, the goal is to end up all the way around here. Now, to do that, you gotta have a little movement. I get here, here, boom. The goal is to tar tuck your partner's hand into the hip nearest his hip. Now, once we're here, I'm going to hammer my feet down, cross my ankles, and sit up. That's going to allow me to switch hands and cover his hip. I don't make this transition quickly, and Mr. Hackett does not suck in jiu-jitsu, a forward roll which makes your, you lose your omoplata and makes you sad. Now, once you get here, big thing you have to keep in mind is this elbow is the key. The second his elbow comes out, you've lost all leverage. You may get some bullshit wrist lock, but that's about your best hope. So when you're here, you want to grab that elbow, pull it up, make sure it's above your thigh. Now, once you have this hip grip, you're going to scoop yourself out to flatten him down. Once you're here, this hand scoops to the far side shoulder. I lift his elbow up, and I figure for my leg at this point. If you figure for your leg before he is flat, you're wrong. Argue with me about it all you want. You're wrong, cat. Don't do it. Before he's flat, like this. If he's not flat, like a lot of people, when he's sitting up like this, will figure four, which will allow him to sit up and abuse you because you suck at jiu-jitsu. Hammer your heels down. Here's why. Mr. Hackett, get your head off the mat. Mr. Hackett, get your head off the mat. Thank you. Thank you. Puts all the way down in front of his shoulder. How many of you can lift, I don't know, 100-ish pounds like this? Out in front of you while you're outstretched. None of you that I'm aware of. So, now, the second I go to figure four of my legs here, Mr. Hackett, get your head up. Okay. 
It's going to allow him to count. Now, is it going to make it easy? No. But it's not going to be as effective as it could be. I get here. I'm going to flatten him out. Once I'm here, keep that arm tight. Then I figure four. It's going to allow me also to post this foot in the mat, which makes leaning up and whispering weird shit. You don't want to whisper something like, man, you smell decent. It would be like, you smell different when you're awake. Because then you have to wonder, how did he smell me when I was asleep? That's more important. Remember, mental warfare. All right? So we're here, Mr. Hackett. I'm shaking, I'm moving, I'm doing cool stuff. This kick through motion. Kick, hand to hip, through. Will be the hardest part for all of you, is getting that with any sort of fluidity. Here, here. Scoop, break him down. Keep that elbow tight. If you have to readjust his elbow a couple times, great, do it. Nothing wrong with that, I do it every time. That's your question. Generally, yes. If you get under the chin, there is a bulldog choke option that you can get into. I don't like it. If I'm going to choke you here, I'm going to go wrist and collar. Because then it's very hard to argue that I would connect you if I had a collar. That is just a, I'm going to play by the rules. Like, I'm not going to give him a reason to bitch type thing. we did where we were here, same concept, just from a different position. Now, if you can't figure for your legs here, pray your knees together, like you're a good girl cat. Wrist here, all sorts of weird shit. Now, if you can't finish him in the shoulder, some people you're gonna run into are just gummy. I've done it, in, I did it in a match where I literally thought his shoulder should be dislocated, and he was just like smiling at me. The ref was cringing, I was cringing, his coach was cringing, it was weird. Wrist lock him at that point, realize you can always, hey girl, wrist lock from here. Probably a better way to describe that wrist lock, people. I'll wait. Hey girl. I don't like this. It doesn't stick in your brain as well. And I don't, go, I don't get to yell, hey girl, and you wrist lock something. People are confused. Um, questions on this one. Like I said, that opening motion is going to be the hardest part for you guys, getting that spin. Now. So, just make sure. When I come through here, the second this foot comes up, I'm pinching and keeping. The main focus here is keeping the weight in your heels. I'm pinching here, I can always adjust. Like, if he starts slipping this arm out a little bit, that's fine. Because once I get here, you know, I can, I can fix that pretty quickly. It's more keeping him in position. And if he won't tap, you just rinse him on right here. Figure it's that's what we got to work. All right. One, two, three. 